Good news, everybody. Doctor Strange was good. Shocking, I know. Welcome, friends. It's your main man Z here as I will break down quite a bit of Doctor Strange here. And maybe I owe everybody an apology. Although many people will think may disagree with me. But I actually enjoyed Doctor Strange. Now, there are other videos where I point to there are big problems with Doctor Strange 2. There are many, many reshoots that they had reshot almost half the movie. Maybe that was a good thing. I don't know. Uh, but I enjoyed it. And I'll give my reasons as to why I, I enjoyed it. And I do, normally you hear me rant about the MCU. And I recently just completed some of them. But I think all things given together, this was not a bad movie. In fact, I rather enjoyed it. So before we do all that, if you like what we do here, please like and subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. If we've earned your subscription, we'd really greatly appreciate it. But let's talk Doctor Strange. There will be spoilers in this going forward. And let's get into it. What I think I really liked about this was that it was a Sam Raimi movie first. And Sam Raimi is one of my favorite directors. Uh, director of Evil Dead, director of Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, Spider-Man movies. But when he does superhero movies, he also did Dark Man. He doesn't often get to include horror elements. And I thought this was the closest as you're ever going to get to a mainstream uh, movie getting horror. And I, I saw a really great meme that uh, maybe I could share with you guys as I'm talking about this. But the basic plot line... And I, I we'll just go into it. Is is Doctor Strange encounters a young girl who is seemingly being pursued around the multiverse by strange, strange um, creatures, and it's unclear what those creatures might be. And it's his job to kind of figure out what's going on and, and how to do it. And and then things kind of go through there. Now, don't get me wrong. I will get, there are, normally I would rant about this and there's going to be a bunch of things that could really be, you know, I could see why people would get mad because I know there's been a ton of critics out there. They've all been saying the same thing where, you know, I've got problems. Like, there were problems there and the MCU clearly seems to exist. But all of that being said, I'm still going to say that this was a good movie because I really enjoyed everything that was going on. And I'm, I'm still, I'm looking for the meme as we speak now, but essentially if I could describe it to you, it was a picture of the Trojan horse. And if you know anything about the Trojan horse and the Trojan war is um, they're, they're delivering the Trojan horse to Troy and inside the Trojan horse are soldiers who will ransack the village and Troy is the MCU. The horse is Doctor Strange 2. The person carrying the horse is uh, Sam Raimi. And inside of the horse is actually Evil Dead 4. Because this reminded me of Evil Dead 4. Because it had so many horror elements in it. And I really, really did enjoy that aspect of it. You got so many. like, And it was good to see a director put his unique stamp on a movie and if it wasn't for Sam Raimi this movie would not have been good the writing is really weak there's some really stupid things that happen in it but I'm willing to look past all of that because I love Sam Raimi now there's two other things that I think are important to bring up about this which is you have in my opinion one of Doctor Strange's best performances I am not like the first Doctor Strange movie is just okay. It's not a great movie. It's not a bad movie. It's pretty generic. It's a rehash of Iron Man. Not that interesting. And then you have uh, Wanda Maximoff and her strange storyline that's been going through all of this series for, for quite some time. And yes, she's the co-star of the movie, Elizabeth Olsen. This is probably the best performance that Elizabeth Olsen has brought into the MCU. And I think... You finally get a nuanced performance from her that's been lacking in a lot of it. And I think it, it it's a really great way to close out her storyline. I really thought this was the best possible way. And when you talk about a subversion of expectations, to me, 
this is how you do a real subversion of expectations, right? You essentially, and again, this is spoilers, folks. Um, you have Scarlet Witch finally becomes the villain that we've always suspected that she was, especially based on her actions in WandaVision. A lot of people were complaining that Wanda got away scot-free, that she didn't do anything, you know. She tortured all these people in Westview and nothing was going to happen to her. But now she seemed to have gotten her comeuppance. Now, it's interesting because they wanted to paint her in a sort of a shade of gray, right? That she would be, she was doing this because she was trying to save her children or whatever. But Doctor Strange kept telling her that this, they're not your children. They're just, you know, they never happen. They've happened in other universes, but not your universe. And yet she's gone through a lot of trauma, but that just does not justify the horror that she goes through. And what Sam Raimi's really, really good at is adding little visual cues that add a lot to the movie that a lot of other directors don't do. So for example, um, you know, and that's where the horror elements come into this. You have, yeah, you, normally you would get like a villain and they're just like blowing people up and there's no real, like the victims are kind of faceless and nothing really happens. But Sam Raimi did try to put a face to some of the victims. In fact, one of the victims ends up sacrificing herself and burning to death horrifically which I was thought was shocking and really amazing. I thought that was a really good effect. And, you know, she literally burns to death because she's trying to stop the Scarlet Witch. And they started to try to put a human face on a uh, on this villain, right, that we've all come to know and love as, as an Avenger, right? She was She's one of the Avengers. She's one of the good guys. But she's clearly crossed the moral boundary of what is good and evil. You know, she's, they show you her torturing people. Like, there are no holds barred here. Where another director would have might have sh shied away from that and just shown her like, oh, she's bad, but she's not that bad. No, she really was bad. She crossed, crossed the line. And in fact, one of the things that I thought was another really telltale moment was you have her possessing the Wanda from the whatever universe, 616 universe, or I forget what the numbers of the universes were, but she's, she's abusing that body. You see her walking across broken glass, and the, the 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 Wanda that she possesses is not being, you know, she's allowing that body to be, get degraded. She's walking on glass. She's she's having trouble walking, but Wanda doesn't care because it's not relevant to her because she's so single mindedly focused on what she wants. So those are some of the good points. One of the other good points that I thought was really good is. I'm so, what do we complain about with MCU movies and DC movies? The the blue sky beam. Oh my God, the blue sky beam that's going to end the world. Blah, 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 blah. We finally get a climax that is not dependent on a giant CGI battle. It was more about a match of wits and words and conversation and an emotional breakdown of a scene, which I thought was really good and it subverted my expectations. I also thought the trailers did a really good job. Maybe I liked it more because the trailers... We're kind of ho-hum and they really set up Wanda to be like another like oh it's going to be her story too with it being an Avenger and helping Doctor Strange but then the twist of her being the villain and you them really selling her being a villain I was all in man I really really liked it I really enjoyed it um so let's get to what was bad and what we can rant about just a little bit and and, and look as we check out the Ron Tomatoes 87 percent from the audience 10,000 reviews I don't think there's, there's, I, I think it's, it, it bears to point that this was, I think this is a good movie and fan pleasing and Sam Raimi really, for me, it's not a home run, but I was really happy to see him come back. And, and for those of you who are not familiar with, with his work, be sure to check it out. Critic consensus, Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness labors under the weight of a sprawling MCU, but Sam Raimi's distinctive direction casts an entertaining spell. And that sums it up to me. You've got this crazy multiverse, and that's part of the problem. Some of the pacing was off, and the writing was dumb, right? The pacing is giant exposition dump, and then, you know, moments of intense action and, and, and fear and, and things like that. I... Do, like, and I, I understand some of the other critics are real pissed because, you know, they have a, a memory. They go to the memory store to get some memories. Those memories were only relevant, though, so that you could humanize the characters because you literally have a walking, talking MacGuffin, which is America Chavez. Not super thrilled about that character or necessarily that actress. She was whatever. She wasn't super exciting. She didn't bring a lot to the table, but she was all right. 
Rachel McAdams was pretty good. Wong was great. Benedict Wong was great. Again, I thought the performances, I thought Sam Raimi got the best out of the performances out of some pretty wooden characters. You know, when you think about it as a total, like, have we really seen a good Doctor Strange? Yeah, he was pretty good in Endgame, but this, I think he really got to shine. So then let's talk about, um, so we have the walking, talking McGovern machine who's moving them from point A to point B. Not adding a lot. She doesn't really have a character arc. You know, okay, she learns to master her powers. whoop de woo And uh, at least she doesn't have a big battle scene. I did think there was definitely some MCU nonsense in there. When they get to the Illuminati, and I think the Illuminati was a little fan service, we've got, you know, we, we finally get John Krasinski as fan, Mr. Fantastic, and then they immediately kill him. And then you get Anson Mount, who's the Black Bolt from the TV show of The Inhumans, which was cool. I like to see that guy. I thought his costume was pretty cool. Immediately kill the two men, and it's up to the two women to save the day. Now, this is Sam Raimi. Gotta love him absolutely brutally murdering superheroes on the level of James Gunn. I mean, this is just... Because I, I think Sam Raimi is, is clearly a more talented director. James Gunn is getting there, but he does not have the 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 repertoire. The uh, He doesn't have as many good movies as James Gunn. But this, this was awesome. Watching Peggy Carter get cut in half. There is one heinous crime that they committed that everyone should be aware of. Absolutely heinous crime, if I leave you with anything. They killed Captain Marvel, but they did not kill Brie Larson. Oh, couldn't you just kill Brie Larson? Couldn't you just... They had Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. I thought the Professor X scene was awesome. It was a great throwback to Age of Ultron. I thought all the throwbacks were really cool without having to be too clunky. And uh, introducing some cameos that were pretty good that I thought were very interesting. Without being over cameo laden and cameo heavy. I thought some of the visuals were really good. So overall, I really enjoyed it. I know you guys might be disappointed in me, but I'm telling you, think about what your expectations were for this movie. Think about what Sam Raimi as a director brought to the table, his unique camera shots. Even this, there's one scene that you would never get in an MCU movie that was really fantastic. He has the, uh, Doctor Strange has the broken watch that he got from Christine, right? Or whatever her name is. And you see the shot of him looking up or, or the, the camera is looking up through the camera or, or through the the the, uh, the watch dials and everything else as he's taking the broken frame broken clear glass part off and putting a, a clear one on and you can see him like he's gotten clarity like there's this is what good direction does for a movie and it takes a bad script or at least a weak script and and takes all the mcu nonsense and all the other garbage that they usually throw in and makes it passable it doesn't make it the end of the world like it doesn't it do, it didn't spoil the experience for me was i annoyed that they killed the two men first right off the bat yeah i thought that was pretty stupid but look i still got a pretty good doctor strange movie better than the first one and i i, I have to see it again to think about what i you know where i rank it overall but i really enjoyed it and i really enjoyed it's going to make me rethink whether or not wandavision was total garbage because i mean you're talking to the man who's watched all every episode of all six of the MCU TV shows, it was all garbage. Think of the last movies we got. We got Black Widow, trash. Eternals, trash. Shang-Chi, pretty boring to me. Like, it was okay, but not that good. This was different. It was something different, something unique, a unique vision from the MCU. So I liked it. Hit me up in the chat or the comments below. Let me know what you think. Am I off base? Am I crazy? Have I lost my mind? Maybe. But I think I'm on point with this one, and I think a lot of the critics, and, and if somebody wants to debate me, let me know. We can have a challenge on this. We can talk about it. But I really think this added a lot of value to the MCU because it closes out a storyline of a very confused, conflicted character that everybody was like, oh, woke, woke, woke. She's the bestest. She Look at her. She can get away with torturing people. And No, her life was hell, and they kind of explain that, and they even show her almost being banished to hell. So that was great. So a lot of really good stuff to go with here. Give me your opinions below. In the meantime, catch our full-length audio podcast. You can catch it anywhere, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places. If you want to hang out with us, we usually stream Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give us a look there. And uh, as for me, I am off to the next one. Ah.